Uh, Fremantle, interesting story. They've been another flop in this season. There's been quite a few of them. And uh, Justin Longmuir was scratching his head a little bit on the weekend after the game. We're all pretty flat in the rooms after that. Like, um, and we need to have a look at ourselves as, as a coaching group and make sure we're preparing our players the best, giving them the right messages. Yeah, because we dish up a performance like that. It's, it's on the back of your week, not what happens on game day. So we weren't a well-prepared team. And uh, that's what we want to be. Yeah, you know, it's a thought of mine around the decision and the timing to re-sign players. I just wouldn't have extended Fife and Walters for two years at the time that they did. You had to at least leave it until the end of the year to make a decision on these two because the lack of impact that they are having and also the message it sends to, to the rest of the group. At best, it's a one-year extension for the influence and the impact that they're having. And once again, both of them were poor over the weekend as was um, their centre bounce attendance and their midfield order on yeah. their depth going through there. Well, I liked it from Longmuir though and a lot of people might be you know, critical of him and the performance and so they should be but I like that a coach puts his hand up there and feels like for them to have played that way he hasn't prepared them quite well. So Do you think it's a get out for the players? Uh, no, I think the players look at a coach and go, you know what, he's not blaming us, he's, he's taken just as much responsibility as, as we are. Have they got the right captain? Well, you would have to say no, because I, I just need a presence from Alex Pearce. And, I, I, you know, the you captain... don't think he provides that? No, I don't. Do you? Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a fair and reasonable question. But if he's a stopgap for a few years before the Brayshaws and Sarongs are ready for it, it's probably the lesser of two evils than giving, mm. giving it to someone who's not ready. I don't think it's a stopgap year for Freo. They okay. won a final last year. They yep. went all in on the trade period. Big offers for, for Luke Jackson. And, you know, at the time, Brayshaw clearly wasn't ready, but he looked the obvious one. And having a captain that has one kick and no on-field presence and impact in key moments, I think is a bit of an issue uh, for them. On the Giants, on the flip side of that, it's good to see a young side who we weren't sure what they'd do this year. Um, they, they've building. got some experience building. And I think that Geelong win down in Geelong, what confidence that gives you when you can beat them even though they were vulnerable at the time they're so hard to beat down there and he also spoke Adam Kingsley of the move down to uh, being with his players I just thought I'd go down and just try it and see what it was like and I felt like well the players certainly liked it and I felt like I probably had a bit more of a calming influence on the bench there were some moments where it was getting a bit exciting uh, down there too so you know I feel like I have a slightly better influence and we've got a good crew of coaches upstairs who have their fingers on the pulse upstairs He's got seven or eight guns too, hasn't he, at the yeah. top end, who are all playing fantastic football, like Toby Green, Josh Kelly, Canelio's playing good football. Whitfield. Whitfield. Mm. Uh, and when you've got that, you're half a chance. And Tom Him Green as well. Himmelberg's fascinating. The yeah. vibes are that he wants to stay. He's yep. in huge demand among other clubs. And they're in an unusual spot where, certainly defensively, they've got a couple of key defensive posts. Like, if they were going to lose him and the price was right, they could probably tolerate it. Yeah, well, I know for a fact that there's a club interested that is talking in the $900,000 a year mark. So my, my point is this, if he wants to stay and he's great for the culture and you want to keep him, just, just keep him, take it off the table. However, if a club is willing to pay ridiculous amounts of money for him as a restricted free agent, then you end up with pick eight. And if, if the season finished tomorrow, GWS end up with picks five, seven and eight in a year where they're talking about a generational talent of Harley Reid, you go to West Coast and say, hey, guys, we'll turn your pick one into three top tenners. They take Harley Reid. They're back in premiership contention sooner rather than later. I agree with that. I mean, the, the mistakes that they've made by overpaying players you've spoken about a totally. lot of the time, you can't be paying Himmelberg 900 for the performance he's produced. They've he's, got five players on a million dollars. He's a nice-to-have player, and you'd love to keep him in an ideal world, but not at, at that figure. At some point, they've got to move from being a club full of draft picks to a club, club full of great players. That's the only... Thing I was saying to counter that. Totally, they've got to be back themselves in. And go. Totally agree, yeah. Hudgy. But the context of this one is different. If you can get your hands on someone like a Harley. Yeah, it is. It is interesting. The types of offers they're getting are going to be making them second guess a little bit.